Hello, welcome to the Pet Podcast today. Happy Friday. I'm your host, Dr. Roberta Westbrook, and we have an exciting show for you here today. You are going to hear all about our native wildlife and what the Houston SPCA does to work with the Wildlife Center of Texas to get our native wildlife back into the environment where they can thrive. So today, one of our guests is going to be Brooke. She is the animal care manager at the Wildlife Center of Texas. And in a few minutes, you'll hear from her about the wonderful work that they do and how you can help to protect the wildlife that you might come into contact with in your home. But before we get into that exciting topic, I do want to keep reminding you that our adoption center is open. We welcome you to come on down bring your family and friends and make a day of it and consider taking in a new pet into your home. We have wonderful pets like this beauty here named LeFou. LeFou is a wonderful friendly dog up for adoption. So good. She's up for adoption and you can come visit with her. We don't require any appointments. We are open from 11 a.m. to 6 p.m. daily. So you can come right on in and spend time with this beautiful girl and see if she's a good fit for your family. We have dogs, cats, puppies, and kittens, and we welcome you to come on down and see our wonderful campus here at the Houston SPCA. If you're wondering more information about what we do, please take some time and visit HoustonSPCA.org and think about how you might like to become a part of our extended family in the way of fostering or volunteering. We have so many opportunities. So please visit our website. Well, without further delay, I do want to have Brooke talk to you guys about wildlife. It, we are just teaming with wildlife here. And so let me let Brooke talk to you about that. Hi, Brooke. Tell Hi. us about uh, the wildlife and the work that you do. Thank you. Yes. So um, as most of you know, we have a wildlife center here at the SPCA. We're definitely a campus for all animals. Um, so we're taking in about 12,000 wild animals every year here at the Wildlife Center of Texas and at the Houston SPCA. Um, so we're one of the largest wildlife centers in Texas, one of the largest in the nation um, even. Um, so we're taking in a lot, a lot of animals, especially during this time of year. This is our busiest, busiest time of the season. Um, so this is our spring time when all of the wild animals are having babies. Um, and unfortunately, some of those babies are getting orphaned or injured um, and all of those kinds of things. So we're taking in between 50 to 60 animals per day right now here at the center. Um, so a lot of those are opossums. We get a ton of baby opossums. We're taking in a lot of baby rabbits right now. Um, and we're also taking in things like baby squirrels. We're just now getting started with our baby bird season. Um, so those little nestlings and fledglings are going to start falling out of trees, um, especially if there's a storm or any kind of wind. We get a lot of baby birds coming in after those types of events. Um, so that's kind of what's going on right now. We probably have over 500 animals right now in care at the Wildlife Center. Such amazing work. Such amazing. You know, you teach our students about wildlife, too, who are future veterinarians. And uh, it's really helpful information for people to know what kind of things in their home environment they may need to be aware of um, that wildlife can get into, kind of the areas under the house and the trash. Talk a little bit about the dangers that wildlife could get into in the home. Yeah, for sure. So in our, our lobby, if you've ever been to the Wildlife Center, if you've ever found something and dropped something off, or maybe you just came by to see the animals, um, we actually have a little porch set up that talks about um, the ways that wildlife um, can interact with people at their homes. Um, so it talks about things like the trash can. Um, this is the most obvious one uh, for a lot of reasons, but possums and raccoons um, can definitely try to go for those trash cans if they're not properly secured. Um, so if you're leaving trash out, especially overnight when those types of animals are active, uh, the best thing to do is actually just bungee cord the trash cans or to get wildlife proof trash cans um, that can stop those animals from getting in and, and collecting your trash. Um, that's also going to help if you're not feeding those animals by putting it, those juicy bits of trash outside. That's also going to help control the amount of wildlife that's in your area. Um, some of the other things you can do, um, there are some birds that will nest in your dryer vent. Um, so getting a cover for the vent of your dryer um, is a great option. Um, there's things that you can do to secure your porch, like Dr. Westbrook said. Um, there's certain types of uh, wood that you can get. If you're interested in that or you need help with that, um, you can definitely give us a call. We have some resources for you uh, to help in those areas. 
that's great information. And a lot of the things that you said actually apply to regular pet animals too, like dogs and cats that we have in our yards, because we want to make sure that uh, we're not leaving food out that could be spoiled for them or that they're, you know, that they're getting into the trash as well. So a lot of those safety things protect our own pets as well as the wildlife. So those things are, are very helpful. So you mentioned that you're in the middle of opossum season. You're seeing a lot of abandoned opossums and squirrels. Um, what are some of the other species that you commonly get in? I know there's hundreds, but oh, yes. <laughs> what are some of the more common species that you get in on a regular basis? At the yeah, um, we have about a list of about 350, 360 species that we've taken in over the course of um, how long we've been operating. Um, but the most common ones is possums for sure. They're our number one intake. We take in about 4,000 possums every year. Um, our second most common is probably uh, squirrels, raccoons, um, things like white-winged doves. Uh, white-winged doves are an interesting one. We get a lot of them because they've been caught by cats. Um, so they're one of the most common animal that's caught by outdoor cats. Um, so you might find those if you live around um, some cats that are living outside. Um, things like red-eared slider turtles uh, are very common. They get hit by cars quite a bit on the road. Um, and another thing that you might want to keep in mind if you ever see a turtle crossing the road, the best thing to do is just to pick it up and put it on the same direction where it was headed. You never want to take it back to the other side of the road where it came from. It'll just try to cross again. So um, keep that in mind. But that's another common one that we get. Um, a lot of mockingbirds, blue jays, cardinals, those types of animals as well. So we do have somebody ask a question. What do you do if you find an injured wildlife animal? Yeah, yeah, great question. Uh, we actually have some uh, little demonstrations here for you. Um, a lot of people are, are frightened of wildlife and they don't want to handle wildlife. And that's a great, that's a very healthy fear because there are some dangerous um, things that can happen with wildlife. Um, but the best thing to do is to get um, a box like this one. If you have something small like a baby squirrel um, or a baby bird or something like that that can fit in this size box, you can just use um, the size of a box. This is actually a rice sock that you can use to help keep animals warm while you're transporting it. This is just a, a little sock that's filled with dry rice uh, that you can microwave for about 30 seconds and put it in with an animal to help keep it warm. A lot of the baby animals when they're uh, just still trying to be born and stuff, they, um, they don't really have a good control over their temperature. So this will help keep them nice and warm. We also have something soft in here. These are pouches that our volunteers have made for us. They're great, uh, but you probably won't have this particular thing, but you can have like a t-shirt or a rag or something like that that you can put in with the animal just to keep them kind of soft. Um, and there's some newspaper in the very bottom of this just to catch any uh, urine and, and things like that so it doesn't leak all over your car. Um, so we have this little box and this is a great transport system again for things that are small like baby birds, baby possums, baby squirrels, things like that. If you have a larger animal, um, obviously you want to be a lot more careful. We recommend um, taking like a large towel or a blanket or some kind of large cloth um, like these that are laid out here. Uh, you can uh, hopefully it'll be a little bit larger than this, but you can just cover the animal up. Uh, and then wrap him um, in the towel. So you don't actually have to touch the animal at all. You can just cover him up with the towel and then wrap him up and put him in a box or a kennel or whatever you have on hand to do the transport. So somebody asked if it's true that um, if a bird is on the ground, a baby bird is on the ground, that the mom is not gonna want them anymore. There not necessarily. There are situations where that does happen. Um, so we have a lot of baby herons. That's going to be coming up pretty soon, um, especially in this area. Um, our, the unique part about Houston, we have all the bayous. We're at the coast, um, so we get a lot of those shore birds and water birds. Um, so it, in the bayous especially, there's a lot of these types of herons. Those do abandon their babies when they fall out of the tree. I don't know why they do that, but um, herons are really bad about that. So if you ever see a baby heron on the ground, yes, it absolutely needs help immediately. Um, but for other types of animals, especially for animals that are starting to kind of mature but haven't quite figured out how to fly yet, those birds are on the ground for a reason and the parents are usually still taking care of them. So if you see a, a blue jay, for example, that kind of looks mostly like the adult but might still have a little bit of juvenile kind of look to him, uh, that's, that's called a fledgling and those animals are learning how to fly, they're out of the nest trying to figure it out, but they might be on the ground um, so you might see them and think, oh, this animal's injured, he needs help. Not necessarily. The parents are probably around, and if you try to go and grab that blue jay, they're going to dive bomb you. Not that that's <laughs> like a, a dangerous thing. They're, you just take an umbrella and be like, okay, well, no. Uh, but 
Um, they they will still take care of those babies on the ground. However, if you see a, an animal like a baby bird that is not feathered, like it's pretty pink mostly, uh, those are ones that either do need to be rescued or you can try to put them back in the nest. If you know where the original nest is, you can set those baby birds back up there. And the parents will usually take them back. Um, if you don't know where the nest is, you can make a new nest um, using things like Easter baskets or trick-or-treating baskets. As long as it has some kind of drainage in the bottom, you can use any type of basket um, and just put some natural like leaf litter and grass in there and stick the baby in there. But you do need to watch to make sure that the parents are still coming back to feed them. Um, if you've set a baby in a nest and you've been watching for several hours and have not seen the parents, probably better just to bring that animal in. Dr. West, when somebody asks, what do you do if our pet is attacked by a wild animal, or is there something that we can do to protect them for vaccination protection? Yeah, that's a that's a great question. So certainly, uh, if you have a dog or a cat that's outdoors and they come into contact with wildlife, you know, we talk about that all the time, how to minimize contact with wild um, animals, uh, because it's not a natural interaction. So sometimes those interactions become violent, and maybe you might have a, a bite that occurs between the wild animal and your pet. The best thing to do is just get your pet into the veterinarian uh, because the most common thing that we're going to be treating are bite wounds. And so maybe antibiotics and cleaning the wound would be most important, getting some pain medication. It's also important to make sure that your pets are current on their rabies vaccination. Most of us are concerned about rabies um, in terms of, you know, being bitten by raccoons and, and other wild animals. And so Making sure that your pet's vaccinations are current is really the first step. Then if there is some negative interaction that requires veterinary care, get your pet to the veterinarian right away. Um, and then uh, your veterinarian can take it from there. Okay. And then question for Brooke. Um, is it true that our possums play dead when they're scared? <laughs> yes. Yeah, that's definitely true. Um, and so if you do see a possum that's laying there very, very still, they can like literally look like they're deceased. Um, doesn't necessarily mean that they are. So uh, it, just watch really carefully. Their breathing is going to be super, super shallow, but it will be there. Um, if you are looking at them for 10, 15 minutes and haven't seen their breath um, and you're really not sure, you might like poke at them very gently, obviously, with a stick just to make sure that they are deceased before you do anything drastic like burying them or something like that. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And are there uh, ways people can volunteer at the Wildlife Center to help with all the feeding? Yeah, for sure. We always need volunteers, especially during the week. Um, and we, our volunteer program is set up um, directly with the SPCA's program. So if you're interested in wildlife only, or if you're interested in all of the animals that the SPCA cares for, you can sign up either on our website or the SPCA's website. It will take you to directly the same place. Um, and you can sign up to come in um, we're, we're always needing help cleaning. It, it is a lot of cleaning, uh, but there's also feeding, of course, um, going on. And, and we're definitely always looking for volunteers, for sure. Awesome. That's awesome. For, well, thank you so much for, for teaching us about uh, wildlife and how we can help to protect uh, wildlife in our area. Uh, it's very busy. So again, if you see any injured wildlife, the Wildlife Center of Texas um, accepts uh, wildlife and uh, injured and ill wildlife. Can you tell us our your business hours and when they might be able to bring injured wildlife if they're, if they're needing that assistance? Sure. Yeah. Our campus is located directly here with the SPCA. So our address is 7007 Old Katy Road. Uh, there's signage outside if you're looking for the Wildlife Center specifically, or if you're not sure where to go, just ask someone. They'll be able to tell you where our front door is. We're open every day from 9 a.m. until 3 p.m. If you have wildlife after that, uh, you can take it to the SPCA up until they close at, I believe, at 6 p.m. Um, and if you have any questions or you're not sure, definitely give us a call. We may not be able to answer the phone right away because we're handling all 500 of those possums that we have, uh, but definitely give us a call, leave us a message, and we'll get back to you as soon as we can uh, to let, give you advice. If you need advice on maybe this animal's injured, maybe it's not, maybe I should bring it in, maybe I should leave it, um, give us a call. We're definitely happy to answer those questions for you. Someone's asking, if a baby squirrel like fell from a tree, should they start feeding it or should they try to no, find definitely. help right away? Yeah, so um, we say this on our voicemail message too, but we always recommend not to give any food or liquids to any wild animal. 
Um, there's multiple reasons for that. Um, like Dr. Westbrook was saying, there are some diseases that are transmissible from wildlife to humans, so we never want to um, be at any, at any risk for those. Um, it's also likely that you're going to feed the wrong thing. Um, it's not likely that you're going to have opossum milk at home just lip hanging out on your shelf. Um, so we never want you never want to give them like cow milk or even kitten milk and puppy milk. Some people try to give that. Um, you never want to give that. And especially if you have a baby bird, those guys are super, super fragile. Um, they can they don't do well when people are feeding them the wrong food. So definitely never give wildlife food or water. Uh, if you're not sure what to do, and if you can't get it to us right away, give us a call. We have some resources where we might be able to help you bring it in. Um, but otherwise, we just recommend de never, never feed wild animals. Definitely good information because we want to make sure that we, we give them the best chance for rehabilitation and release yes. back into the environment. So whatever we can do to protect them on that on that journey back uh, to great health is important. So yep. thank Are, you again. Is there any way where um, a person can find the pines of pet can keep them or do you recommend them all releasing them to the wild? Yeah, no, if you find wildlife, um, it's never a good idea to keep that animal as a pet. Most of the time it's actually illegal to keep it. Um, so Texas Parks and Wildlife and the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service have very strict regulations on what animals can be kept in captivity. Um, so definitely never keep an animal, a wild animal, as a pet. If you're finding something like a, a exotic pet, like a hedgehog or something like that, that would be something that you should call in about to see before you try to keep that as a pet. But if you find a wild, a native wild animal, we never, ever recommend to keep that in your possession. Are there any um, ways that a pet can, can be injured from um, a wildlife or like if it's really small, like Yorkie from like uh, falcons or things like that or what are... Sure, there have certainly been reports. If you have a really small toy breed dog, there have been reports of some of our larger um, kind of prey birds that, uh, that are able to pick those smaller dogs up and sometimes carry them away. And so again... If you know that you're in an area that has a lot of wildlife or there are eagles or, you know, raptors and other uh, birds of prey, then I would say make sure that you are putting your animal out in the yard under supervision. So make sure that they're on a leash or that you're very well aware of where they are in the yard, that you're checking on them um, to try to prevent anything from happening. Oftentimes, if you're there with your pet, uh, some of those birds may be less likely to try to pick up your, yeah, pick up your dog. Is that what, sure. you, that what you'd say? <laughs> yep. Well, we thank you guys again for joining us here at the Houston SPCA and being introduced to the Wildlife Center of Texas, if you didn't know that that was a part of what we do here. So please come on down and visit us this weekend. Uh, again, bring your family and friends and come consider adopting a pet for your family. So we appreciate Brooke being here. We certainly appreciate LeFou being here. What a beautiful girl. She will make somebody a wonderful family pet. pet. She's looking for her forever home. So we thank you again. Please come back and join us next Friday. We always have wonderful information to share with you. And if you're interested in supporting us, please go to HoustonSPCA.org backslash donate. Your donations will help support all of our many programs to keep animals safe, healthy, happy, and in your homes. We will see you next week. Thank you for joining us.